Okay, guys. All right. I'm totally on my own today. I'm sorry for the little mishap today because I've been playing around with buttons and I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. So if anyone can at least give me an okay on how the audio is, because today I didn't get uh, my little lapel mic. I actually am using my shotgun mic again, and I'm still trying to figure everything out because I can't hear myself. It's all good? Hola! <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, everyone. Okay. Um, oh, wow, nine people watching. Okay, so let me tell you quickly how everything's set up because Jim helped me set everything up. So we are streaming on Twitch and YouTube Live, and he allowed, he also showed me another feature where everyone on Twitch and YouTube can communicate with each other as well. So that way it doesn't look like I'm speaking to a ghost or my invisible friend. So anyway, you're going to be able to speak with each other today. Please speak a lot with each other because I'm alone and I cannot entertain you all day since I'm by myself and I can't hear you guys. So, um, good meatballs today, yes. All right, hey, all right. hey Jasmine. Hey, guys. Hey, Mama. Jim, you're on as well. Okay. Well, we have more people than last time. Fantastic. So. Today we're going to be making uh, one of my other videos that I made not that long ago. We're going to be making a meatball sub. So this is an easy thing to make. You can adjust the ingredients as well. I did make it and I don't have the link in the description yet. I will maybe later if I remember. So I'll put that in the link or you can search my YouTube page. It's a very easy, easy sandwich to make. And it's versatile, so at least you have a meatball recipe. I'm going to give you a quick marinara or tomato, be tomato <laughs> basil uh, sauce recipe as well. And, well, it's just a quick and easy recipe. Okay, so everybody's ready to start? All right, and my camera's working. Thank goodness. Okay, so let me switch to... I right, we'll switch to this camera. It's a little hazy just because I don't have enough light for the little one, but... Hopefully it's okay. All right. What is everyone saying? I see me post an interesting way to see. Before you go too far ahead, you get too far ahead. Get too far ahead. Uh, can I make a suggestion? Go ahead, Jim. Sync the audio. How? Jim, uh, right click on the mic and choose advanced. I'm s sorry, guys. Um, wait a minute. Go back. Right click on the mic. Properties. Mm. In the mixer. Wait, in the mixer. Sorry. In the mixer, advanced properties. Okay, I'm in advanced properties, Jim. Yeah, the audio mixer, I have it. What now? If you can still hear me. Sync offset. Sync, sync. Um, no, I don't see. Sync offset, everything's at zero uh, milliseconds. Everything. What do you want me to, Jim, what do you want me to put it at? For the mic. Okay, what do you want me to increase it to? Five milliseconds. Oops. Okay. Okay, is that five milliseconds now? Better? Good? The picture's clear. I adjust a few settings in my camera, which helped. Uh, a little more seven. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Still trying to work out all the hiccups. Okay. Is that seven milliseconds now? Better? If I speak and then you can hear me and tell me, so you know. Good. So, all right. Everybody, close your ears.
It is close. Okay. So are we good or we have to put you on TV? Go to 10. Okay. <laughs> okay. 10. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Is that 10? Yeah. This is, this is going to be horrible for the, I'm going to have to edit this video for YouTube. Good. Point zero delay. So not bad at all. Ah, uh, okay. It's okay now. So when I say something, it doesn't look like it's lagging. Well, more later. Okay. Well, we'll talk. Okay, we can talk about it more later. Oh, uh, there's a little night bot working. Okay, guys. Anyway, we're gonna start now. Again, I apologize for the delay and for the little mishaps because I'm not a specialist with using the software. I haven't done it really before. Jim's been doing all of it for me, and so today we're going to. Well, it is a little slow for me. It looks a little weird. Anyway, we're gonna start. So first we're going to make some caramelized onions. Yes, I'm going to cut them real quick. Then we're going to make the marinara sauce. And while the marinara sauce is cooking, then we're going to work on the meatballs. We're going to cook those and we're going to add those back into the sauce, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Don't look at yourself. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it throws you off because there's like a delay when I'm looking at myself compared to uh, what I'm actually saying in person. It's horrible. It does throw you off. Okay, let's start with the onions. Whoops. No. No. Better. Okay. Now you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just going to take a few onions. I'm going to julienne them. So, top and bottom. Peel. And you want to get rid of any of the excess skin. And if you're wondering why my cutting board is so small, well, whoops, it's typical for the uh, places here to have smaller cutting boards because at home in the US I have a big one. I prefer those a lot better. Now, when you're cutting onions, if you have any bad pieces like this, you'll get a lot of bad pieces. Either cut it off or Take off another layer because you don't want these. All right. Uh, Jim, I'm here. Hey guys, sorry if I can't say hi to everyone if you just pop in, but welcome to our little chat. We have we're trying to get all the kinks worked out. I think we have everything worked out. Okay. All right, so now if uh, I'm going to have to, I'll turn the cutting board. I still need to get another little camera and adjust the settings. Anyway, to cut Julianne, yeah. Uh, if you watch any videos of Gordon Ramsay, he teaches, he does really good for teaching you how to cut properly. This is the way that I learned how to cut from my father, as well as while in a professional kitchen, you cut like this. So you want to take your little fingers, you know, and you want some space as well. You want to take your little fingers, you're going to take your three fingers, your thumb behind your middle finger, and you're just going to slice nice thin slices. And the motion, I also made a, um, a video on how to cut this, which is on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to check that out, it's very helpful. You want to move your knife. A little like a piston on a train, yeah? And this is a very easy cut to do, but go slow because if you go too fast, you can cut yourself. And you can also chop as well and do the forward cut, but it's not that important. Knife basics are one of the most, well, it's one of the most you know, easiest things that you can do to learn how to cook well is to learn how to use your knife first because if you don't know how, and it just makes everything a lot more difficult unless you do know how to use your knife. So, oof, horrible. All right, we're gonna get a little pan. Actually, I'm gonna get a bigger pot first. Put that on the stove, and we get the fire on. We're gonna add a bit of oil. Let this come up to temp. Let that come up to temp. 
And let's say hello to everyone. Oh, we have about 15 people, not bad. Hey guys, hello everybody. Welcome if you just joined. Jim is my administrator for the chat today, so he's going to be basically monitoring everything for me. He's a great help, trust me. And if you guys don't uh, follow Jim from My Spanish Kitchen, follow him on YouTube. He's also on Twitch. Actually, he's mostly on Twitch now. So he has a cooking channel on Twitch as well as a gaming channel if you're into games as well. This is something. Hi, I'm a Korean YouTuber. Hey, and Jim is a legend. Yeah, he is a legend. Yeah. So when we have the time, and I think Jim is going to, or Jim can discuss it while I'm cooking. Uh, but what he wants to do is when we start reaching certain goals, either on his channel or on mine or on both, then we're going to set certain, uh, what is it? Well, certain activities together that we're going to do. And we also want to do a live stream together while we're cooking and everything else, et cetera, et cetera. So Jim can explain that a lot better than you. Um, so ask him if you guys are interested as well. Okay. So when the oil comes up to temp, because with the caramelized onions, you don't want to burn them. Yeah. We're going to make some quick caramelized onions. So add them to the pan. And because the onions have a lot of water in them, we want to take the water out. This is just going to add a sweetness to the onions. And especially if you have sweet onions, well, you caramelize them, and it just adds a lot of flavor to the dish. Now I'm going to add a few ingredients a little later to help sweeten the onions even more, which is optional if you want. All right, so onions in the pot. No, no, that's okay. That's all right. I'll save the onion for later. All right, so guys, how's everybody doing today? Because here today in Barcelona, it's a very hot day. Yeah, and it's, trust me, I'm feeling it wearing the chef's coat right now. It's very warm here. Yeah, I know. It is very hot here. <laughs> uh, I know. I wish it would rain a little more. It'd be nice if it would. All right, so the onions are going to be cooking and cooking and reducing and reducing. Now, to make some good caramelized onions, you can leave these here for hours or all day, yes? And to make them extra good, leave them there for all day, and then just keep them on low heat, watch them occasionally, turn them occasionally as well to make sure they don't burn. Because the more they reduce, the more sugars is going to, well, to release, or if you add wine, it'll reduce with the sugars in the wine, and then you'll get even more, well, sugary, sticky, and, well, then you can easily burn them. Uh, let's see. Jim, Bob, wait. Right. Chat's going pretty fast. This is good, huh? Hey, Victor. Oh, it's good to see everybody here today. Hey, let's see. John, Victor, awesome bonbons. Hey, Jim, what's it doing? Amazing job. Oh, thank you, Victor. I have to... Today may be a little bit of a long video just because I'm doing everything by myself and I don't want to ignore you guys. Yes, because this isn't good if I do. Because otherwise, why make a live video? Um, yeah, Jim, I, I noticed that because we put the chat on and I have bots both for Twitch and YouTube. So... It's doing it repeatedly. Um, next time, if we do it like this, I'm going to have to turn one or the other off. I think. I don't know. Well, we'll talk about it a little later. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Nice hot in Barcelona. It's very hot in Barcelona today. So, James looks so happy. I, well, actually, I prefer live streaming. It's easier because you can act more like yourself. I don't have to edit. I don't have to move the camera 50 times, literally, 
And I also don't have to spend another 10 to 15 hours, sometimes, you know, editing and rendering the video, checking the audio, picking the music, etc., etc. Uh, fancy camera set. <laughs> it's not as fancy as it could be, trust me. Uh, super light number four. Oh, thank you. Hey, right, guys, uh, by the way, for everyone on YouTube, if you can hit the like button, that'll be great. And if you haven't subscribed yet, if you could subscribe to my channel, that would be fantastic. Because YouTube, it take YouTube takes these things very seriously for the algorithm. And the algorithm is very important. Okay, so, caramelized onions. This is going to continue cooking. And I need this pot for later. So, I'm going to take some thyme, yes, some tomato, dry thyme. Fresh is best, but if you can't find it, use dry. I'm going to add this to the caramelized onions. I'm going to add quite a bit. Thyme adds a nice flavor to them. You can also add a little bit of, like I said, white wine, but not at all. And if you've seen me, yes, I'm in my swim trunks today because it's hot. <laughs> it's like almost 30 in the kitchen, especially with the fire and everything. Oh, thank you, guys. You're doing very good, James. Thank you, Mama. All right, so we're going to let that cook. And while this is cooking, well, I'll tell you what. This is going to continue cooking back here, so that way you can see me while I'm cutting. And um, also, you can add a little bit of salt, yeah, to the onions. The salt will help break them down. This is a good thing. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. YouTube, YouTube, do you have a swimming pool? Who has a swimming pool? No, here, no, we don't have a swimming pool. I, I want a swimming pool. Uh, trust me, it would be nice. We used to have one when we lived in Lyon in France. And during the summer, um, actually the pool was very hot, but still, even if it was hot water, it was still nice to at least jump in after work or when I was working kukia, which is part-time. So morning, you work the morning shift, you have like two hours off, and then you work the night shift as well. So about a 10, 12 hour day. Just for reference, I have to crank up to 250 milliseconds. Jim, you want me to change this right now? Yeah. Yes, 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 it's okay. Crank it up. All right. I'm at 10 milliseconds right now, Jim, for the my shotgun mic. You want me to put it up to what? 250? Yeah, Elizabeth is in the background. She's a... 250. Okay. Can you hear me now? Jim, it's good? See or no? Much better. Okay. That's even more of a delay for me now. All right. So, okay. 100 messages, oh my dear, not getting very good. More than welcome to come to the pool. Oh, thank you. Well, what we do have here though, even if we don't have a swimming pool, which I would love to have one, trust me, uh, we do have the beach that's about 20, well, on the road is 20 minutes away because of the road, but more or less we're only like five miles away, it's not that far. So we can see the Mediterranean, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. I love this. You wake up, you go to the beach, have a nice day at the beach, relax, a couple beers, nice. Anyway, the onions are cooking away. Now, we're going to set the base for our um, tomato basil sauce, or the marinara sauce. <laughs> now let's switch the camera and make it more interesting. That's a little too hazy. Uh, sorry guys, leave it at this, yes? The sink is much better now. I'm on my way. <laughs> Alright, so 
you can use, I'm going to use some shallots. I have some little shallots, yes. Banana shallots are easier to cut. When you have these little ones, you have to cut a lot. Anyway, and for those who don't know what a shallot is, think of a shallot basically between, halfway between a, well, garlic and an onion. So, there's, they're much sweeter than, say, onions, even more than sweet onions. And they have a bit of a purplish color to them. They're very nice. Shallots are literally the go-to um, type of onion in France. So normally in the restaurants we use shallots a lot more than just normal onions. And if I can get them, I prefer to get them because I just like them more a lot better. But here you only get the small ones, you don't get the big ones. And the big ones are the banana shallots are a lot better. It's a lot easier to use them. Okay, so there's a yummy. I apologize, guys, if I miss your comment. I'm not doing it intentionally. Just look at it. Now it looks way better. Okay. Do not cry. Now, shallots don't make me cry. Onions do. I can't chop onions. Yeah, I know. Well, trust me, when you're in the kitchen and literally you have a sack of like, well, 50 pounds or like, what, 25, 30 kilos of onions to cut, you feel the pain. And normally, you can't stop. You have to keep, you just have to keep at it, keep cooking, keep cutting, or sorry, I guess you could say, keep cutting, and well, that's it. That's how it is. It's like, the problem is with the little shallots, is you don't get a lot off of them. As you can tell, you don't get that much. And when you have to cut like a lot, it's tedious. It takes a lot of time, so you have to be careful because you can easily cut yourself. I and I I'm gonna talk to Jim. We may work around the little nine box a little bit because it looks because I see that they're popping up maybe a little too often. So we may fix this for the next ones. Mm -hmm. Anyway, since we to keep everybody happy in the chat going, what is everybody's favorite type of Italian food? Yeah, write in the comments and let me know. Good. Um, one thing I just remembered, um, I don't need a cup burn was. Anyway, well, I'll show you real quick if you want to. So, quick way to cut burn was, if you can see me. Like I said, I made the video, so check that out. Um, you're just going to take your three little fingers again. Yeah, you're going to cut little slices just like this with the tip of the knife. Cut into the shallot and then cut again. And then you have bernoise, which is what this is called. But since I'm going to blend the sauce, and I don't need to do this, I'm just going to cut julienne, which is sliced. And then we'll cook it and we'll blend it. So when you have to blend the sauce, you don't need to worry about cutting it correctly. Actually, the shallots are a little, a little bit. Anyway. It's coming in from YouTube, it pushes it faster. Ah, right. Set it really after a certain amount of messages. Yeah, no, we did set it up randomly, but like Jim's saying, um, since chats are coming in from Twitch and YouTube, it's multiplying the messages faster. So, well, that's why it's appearing a lot faster because everybody's speaking to each other. The good thing about this is that all of you, like I said earlier, can speak to one another. I appreciate it. 
Jim's Up Tunes, it's his own cooking channel. I know Jim's a great help. And Jim is going to start his, um, he's going to start his dish soon. I think June 6th, if I'm right, if I remember correctly. He's going to start very soon. So be sure to check his channel out June the 6th, uh, two days after the 4th of July. I'm sorry, J July 6th, July 6th, two days after the 4th. And, uh, well, we'll support him as well. My favorite time dish, any pasta dish. I, Joe James, I will be streaming many more times in together. I, we will. Virtual hug. Oh, that's nice. July, yeah, unless I find time machine. I, well, I have a time machine. Well, you, trust me, Jim, you'll be surprised, yeah? It'll be June before you know it again. Time goes by too fast. Next year, exactly. <laughs> okay. So... Just so everyone can see, the onions are starting to break down a bit, and if you don't leave them, they will start to burn. Now, since they're starting to lose the, the water, the moisture, they're starting to become smaller, I'm going to put them in a little pan, transfer them to a smaller pot, and that way, we can use this big one to make the uh, marinara sauce. So... If you need help or learning on how to cook in a small kitchen, yeah, my channel is great because I live in a teeny kitchen here in Barcelona. You have to be very, well, adaptable with all your things in the kitchen. All right, so that's cooking. We're going to start again with this pot. No? Okay. Let that come up to him. Add a little bit of oil. Mm -hmm. It's better to give one nice, but the meat is a vegetarian person. Oh, interesting. Oh, I just made a spaghetti bolognese today because Elizabeth's grandma's over, so we had a little bit of bolognese. I like bolognese. I really do. But you want to make a good one, it takes a while. A vegetarian one I haven't tried though before. Yeah, Jim is going to have a lot of vegetarian things. He actually made our Jim did a vegetarian burger a few months ago, which looked absolutely delicious. And then I made, even more months ago, when I was in Cambrils, I made what's called here a scalivala, which is a Catalan dish. It's an easy dish to make at home. Normally, they have it as a salad with maybe a little bit of goat cheese, or you can eat it on a, well, it's called a tostada. Yeah, which is a little piece of bread toasted, and it was very good. I'll show you the recipe if we find it in time. I have my Spanish kitchen. Hey guys, we had some. I oh, had yeah, some escalivada for lunch today. I I like escalivada a lot, especially with goat cheese. Very tasty. Okay, so. Shallots go in. Some garlic as well. Um, today I don't have any fresh basil with me. This is one thing I wish I did have. If you can get fresh basil, use fresh because you will notice a massive difference. There we go. I'm getting better at the cameras now. Remember which one's which. <laughs> but you will notice a massive difference uh, when you make or when you use fresh ingredients or fresh herbs when you make sauces or even when you cook in general. There'll be a lot more flavor. And you won't have to use as much because all the oil is still in, well, the herbs and the leafy greens. Auto focus is much better today. I know it is, Jim. I played around with it, yes? And believe it or not, I don't have extra lights on, as you can tell, so I'm using natural light. And I did play around with the settings a little bit. It's still not as fast as your camera, though. Still a little slower. 
All right, so since everybody is, seems to be pretty happy while this is cooking, has anybody, because this is interesting, yeah? Who has plans to come to Spain this year? Yeah, because Spain is normally a pretty hot destination to visit for traveling. And it's just, I'm curious to see if anybody has plans to travel this summer to Spain. Because right now there's some pretty good deals as well. This, because the big thing is that everybody wants to come to Spain because of after, well, all the problems last year. And hopefully everything will be better this summer than last year. Also, if, if you need to add a little more oil to the caramelized onions, don't be afraid, add a little more. This, I'll tell you what we're going to do now. Because this is just a simple tomato sauce. We're going to add a little bit of white wine. Okay, we'll reduce that. Right, we'll add a little more too. Okay. Add a little more white wine to that. Now, what you can do with the marinara sauce is if you use fresh tomatoes, again, you'll have a lot more flavor. It's not as fast. You have to break them down and cook them, uh, but you can if you want. Yeah, no more master mysteries. I know. Yeah, so recently, um, let's see. You're coming. <laughs> so recently, uh, Spain just announced that you don't have to wear any masks in the streets or outside in public areas, at least if you have more than one and a half meters, I think, away. So you still have to, when you go to the grocery stores or anything, just to take, just remember this if you are coming. Um, but no, besides that, this year is going to be a lot better. All right. And if, if people do come to Spain, this is another thing. Either Talk to me, talk to myself or message me, ask me or message Jim because Jim travels Spain a lot or he has been around Spain a lot. I have as well. And considering all the friends and family that all of us have here, we know of a lot of good places as well. So if you want any, well, at least I don't know if the deals are on right now, any deals, but if you want at least some good recommendations on places to stay, places to eat, then more or less. Jim and I, between the two of us at least, we have some pretty good ideas on what you can do, especially in Barcelona, since I'm in Barcelona and Jim is just south of Barcelona, so don't be afraid to ask us. Whoops. There we go. Okay. All right, now if anybody didn't know this, this is a truth, that right now... You can get a little drunk if you breathe in the fumes from pouring too much wine into the kettle. This will happen. Yes, because right now we're burning off the alcohol. Like we want the sweetness from the wine or the sugars left over from the wine. That's why we're reducing. Is Michelle still with us in the chat? Whoops. See, I'm typing and I don't mean to. Well, hey, and guys, right now we're at 15, at least between both channels. That's fantastic. Thank you for joining us today. This, like I said, uh, for everybody that's tuned in recently, this may be a little bit of a long chat or, sorry, uh, maybe a little bit of a long video because I'm alone, just to let everybody know. So, you know, so if you want to, to grab a beer, have a little bottle of wine, whatnot, don't worry about it. Get it right now. I'm burning off some alcohol too by pouring it down my neck. <laughs> well, you mean, yeah, drinking, yeah, okay, well, I'm sure you are, Jim. <laughs> so, no, but right now I'd like to as well, because it's very hot here. The best thing that, what you can do here in Spain on a hot day is to go to the beach, and Jim knows this because he's closer to the water than I am, but to go to the beach, and they have little places, what are called cheringuitos. And the Cherenito is a little restaurant on the beach. You can sit down, have a beer for a few euros, and just enjoy the day on the beach, watching the watching the water, watching the waves, relaxing. Maybe as well to have a little 
Well, some tapas, some croquetas, patata bravas, except it's very annoying. And if anybody wants to actually know how to make uh, patata bravas, Jim has a recipe as well on his channel on YouTube, and I have a recipe on mine as well, if you want to have a look at both of them. So, they're fun. They're fun to eat. I think more fun to eat than to make. Right, now, these onions, like I said, will take a long time. I can't really remove them. Now for the tomato sauce. I'm using a can of pre, uh, well, tomato puree, titarapo, or pre peeled tomatoes, pre pureed tomatoes. And it's important so when you make the tomato sauce, it's important to cook the tomatoes through it. So when you use actual tomatoes, instead of the uh, well, pre-pureed ones. When you actually use those instead, the whole process of cooking them down is a lot better. So then you'll notice a difference in color. Audio is echoing. Hey mom. Yeah, the audio is echoing because I'm using, like Jim is saying, I'm using my shotgun mic which picks up on pretty much everything, considering that this is a, a tunnel, yeah? And my voice is reverberating off the walls. So because of this, there's a little bit of an echo, and I apologize to everyone for this. I am I was expecting from Amazon uh, another mic, and they didn't show up in time. So, I shouldn't geek them after this stream. I, well, yeah, I wouldn't, I would love to go to the training geeto after this today. Now, if you have the time, go to one. It's not one that we enjoy. Uh, the mojito as well. Ah, yeah, the mojitos. Victor, we should get ahead and make an appearance. In <laughs> Where is Victor? Uh, make a special appearance, Chef. Hey, Victor. Uh, I don't know. You have to ask her. She doesn't like to. She's shy. Yes, a lot of people are camera shy. Alright, so, here's a little bit. Okay. This is actually the small fire. I have two medium sized ones in the back and then the big one here. I'm going to switch them around. Now with the tomato sauce, it's going to be cooking. I'm going to add my herbs, my spices in now, because this is dried basil. Like I said, fresh basil is best, but if you can't get fresh basil, well, you have to use what you have. I'm also going to add a little bit of thyme. And if you want to add oregano, you can add oregano, a little bit of salt, black pepper, etc., etc. And one little trick that I've said many times on my channel if you've seen my videos if you have any heartburn with the tomato sauce, because you can't get, uh, well, because it's acidic, it's citric acid, the acid will cause acid reflex. Yes, especially if you have acid reflex disease. It's good to put a little bit of sugar into the tomato to calm the acidity, and that way you won't have, well, your heartburn, if, it, if you do have it, it won't be as bad. If you put enough sugar in, well, then hopefully you won't have it at all. But if you do get a little bit of acid reflex, then it's a little tip for you. Chiringuito. Put the final one after that. My Spanish. <laughs> Alright. 90. It's 90 degrees in Seattle? I'm at the heart of Sierra Fiddle Camp. Oh. 
Oh, that's right. I was reading somewhere where Seattle had a massive heat wave. It was uh, record temperatures. And in Seattle, typically you have like two very hot weeks in August. And that was it. But it's a little early to be having 90 or 100 degrees because Fahrenheit, by the way. Because right now, right now, typically in Washington, like for years, I remember it raining for 30 days straight, literally. And, you know, you bring, you break all the uh, rain records. But typically it should be raining right now in Seattle. Okay, so we have the caramelized onions going. I have the tomato sauce going away as well. It's important to keep an eye on all of these things as if you don't keep an eye on them, um, you will end up with problems, just so you know. Or you will burn them, especially if you're using direct heat such as gas. And if you're using an induction burner, like a real induction with mag a magnetic induction burner, then you'll notice how fast it cooks. Is Elizabeth in the chat? Yeah, she should be, unless she's a little busy. I think she's planting some trees right now or some plants on our balcony. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. I, but I can't eat tomatoes. I can't eat tomatoes. Yeah, I know, Mom, that you can't eat tomatoes, but Dad knows this already. He's a chef. He probably just doesn't do it anymore just because he doesn't want to. And we have a little fly in here as well. We don't normally have them. 110 in Seattle. Oof. That's hot, huh? That's very hot. All right, well, let's see. Let's try to think of a few little games that everybody can play. Who has been to Seattle? Yeah, tell me, because surprisingly, a lot of people that I've met have actually been or visited Seattle. Um, I've lived there, so, you know, I'll visit, obviously, because it's where I've lived and I'm from there. But just to visit on holiday, just to have a holiday, is not my idea of a holiday. The country is more my idea of a holiday to go to, like, say, Mount Rainier, to go hiking. The new meatballs, one of my favorites. Hey, man, how is it in Ireland? Because it's, Spain is very hot, and so is the U.S. right now. They're having a heat wave. Uh, went to Washington State. No, no, I went to Washington State. I, Washington's pretty. This, I, I will admit, my state, my home state, Washington, is very pretty. Arizona's pretty as well, but it's a lot hotter there. Dry heat. Okay, so now... Everything's cooking, and to move things along, I'm going to work on the meatballs. Um, put that off to the side. Okay, so take a little bowl, we take a little bowl. And then take a little towel, take a chef's cloth, put that underneath, and then we don't have it. Around. I'm at your house kitchen and watching some videos. I see I'm a fiddle class soon. He is in Loch Ness. I, he teaches in Loch Ness. Ah, he's in Scotland. I miss Scotland. I have a lot of friends, that, actually, that, uh, like I said before, that compete in Scotland, and even more teachers that I know from bagpiping in Scotland as well. So I'd love to go this summer. Well, I'd love to go anytime, but you know, we'll see how that goes in the kitchen. Brenda, all things much appreciated. All right, so before I get turned around here, the cloth. It's important to keep. A lot of little cloths ready. Okay, so. A quick marinara sauce. That's cooking. I'm going to take it off the heat real quick. Just because it's cooking a little too quickly. And what so is this? Okay. Um... 
dry it so you guys can see. Let me do something. Keep an eye on it. Dry it. No more. More or less. Something like that. So, first, where is it? First, we're going to take some ground meat, and I'm using 50% beef and 50% pork. I like beef, I do, and I like pork as well, but uh, pork has a bit of a different texture. It's a little bit of a better texture when making the meatballs, and 50-50 is pretty good. Scotland, bon bon, ah uh, bon, nah, Asian, nah. There's, a, I have a lot of tunes actually, pipe music as well, pipe music anyway, but uh, no, my mom's been playing the fiddle for quite a few years. Ikea meatballs. No, no, I haven't tasted Ikea meatballs before. <laughs> Not at all. Um, actually, some of the ingredients that the local restaurants, not restaurants, sorry, the, well, Macadana, which is the local grocery store, makes are not bad but typically I don't get a lot of the um, a lot of the pre-made stuff just because I make most of, I make a lot at home I cook all the time at home like two three times a day and plus the videos so you know, I, buy, I don't buy most of it okay so me and we're gonna add a little bit of salt and now, I'm going to show you guys a trick. So typically when you make meatballs, um, I have mentioned this before on my meatloaf video, but typically when you make meatballs or meatloaf, the, the dried meat typically, uh, it will, when you cook it too much, it will start to dry out the ground meat. And I won't go into the details of it, but basically the proteins are the most fibrous, right? When you cook them, they'll squeeze out the water molecules. Now, the way to prevent that is an old French technique called panade. And panade is taking bread and milk, mashing it into a paste, and adding it to your mix. You can add breadcrumbs, or people add panko breadcrumbs as well, but specifically adding bread and milk and developing like a pasty mash. I'm gonna chuck everything in together. But anyway, developing a pasty mash, this will help the protein fibers or will prevent the protein fibers from, get out of here, little fly, from binding too closely together. And that way the water molecules won't, won't be pushed out as much. So you should end up with a better texture with your meatballs as well as your meatloaf or your burgers. So I'm just going to take off a small portion. You don't need that much bread, by the way, just a little bit. And I'm just going to chop this up. Chop it up as small as you can. going Jim since I'm not at the computer and I can't hear anybody so if anybody does have plans this uh, summer to travel um, as far as right now, most of Europe, I believe, is open. Uh, the UK is the only place where you have to have tests again and again and quarantine on top of it. But 
France is open as well. And Spain is open, Portugal is as well. And Germany and all the other places. Portugal is a nice place to visit, by the way. I haven't been, but I have a lot of friends that have been. And I have a lot of friends there as well, so it's a fun place. I was watching here and I really do recommend doing it up on my job. YouTube comments? Ah, back here. <laughs> what am I doing? Probably won't be possible, but we're going to supposed to visit New Zealand. So I, I, I have friends in New Zealand as well. I want to go to New Zealand. I have friends in Australia as well. I have, I have friends that I've worked with in London that are in New Zealand, in Australia, all over the world. In Greece, I've worked with a lot of people. Now, New Zealand would be another place to visit. I'd love to visit. So basically, it's, it's not nice yeah, when you actually look at what a panard is. Um, and I'm not making that much because I don't need that much for half a kilo, or about 500 grams. Just need a little bit. So what it is basically, kind of looks like cereal, yeah? it's just a little bit of bread, or well, dried bread, stale bread, any bread that you have, yeah, that you mash up, you chop it, whatever, and add a little bit of milk to it, and you add this to your meatloaf. There's a lot of old um, methods and recipes in a lot of the old English cookbooks that my dad grew up with, and the methods of cooking as well that my dad grew up with when he was cooking in London in the 60s and 70s and like the old cuisine, the old way of cooking, which today you wouldn't really think about cooking like this because people don't really teach you anymore. So now I'm going to take one egg yolk. Add that. Already added the salt. You can add herbs again, I can add a little bit of oregano, again if you have fresh, use fresh, and if you want to add a little bit of garlic to this, feel free to add it, if you want to add say even some onions or caramelized onions, feel free to add it. All right. I'm really hoping that I'm in a norm, normality, yes. Doing very long, I'm sure it is. A friend here just got back into lockdown and sit. Oh, really? I was hearing about that in in, uh, in Australia as well. If you go to make sure that chili and chip chocolate for me to go to sit down, it's so good. At nine, that's when I'm in Puerto Venezuela, so we get my birthday special. That's <laughs> an occasion. All right. Oh, if anybody hears that noise, that's next door. They're doing, oh, thank you very much, Olzoli, for following me. If anybody hears this, that noise, they're doing the laundry. Yes? It's that time of day. So, well, th thank you for following me. I appreciate it. If anybody isn't following yet, I would... I would appreciate it very much if you would hit that little follow button on Twitch or on YouTube. That means a lot. No noise. We have production on. Uh, yeah, it's true, Jim, but still, you'll be surprised, huh? We have motorcycles that'll go down the street, Harleys, not just the scooters. Or, well, maybe one of the local vendors is coming by to sell some ingredients. Because today they were selling, uh, what, was, what was it, Melicotones. For like one box for five euros and he was on a loudspeaker driving around the neighborhood for you know, like two hours yesterday <laughs> okay all right so anyway you add your spices you can add a little bit of where is it no 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 no, 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 there it is. You can 
add a little bit of black pepper. And for this, we're just going to mix it together. Now, typically, when you use the pan on, what I added for half a, uh, half a kilo of meat was about two tablespoons of pan on. So not that much. You can play around with it and add a little more, add a little less. If you add too much, you'll notice a big difference in the texture of the meat. And if you add too little, you'll notice that it doesn't, well, it's a little dry and it's not as moist as it could be. Okay, so. What to do? Do I want to cut? Okay. We're going to get another pan right now. I'll do it over here. No, no, I'll do it over here. I'm gonna get the pan hot and just gonna do it one handed right now. Add a tad of oil to the pan. If, another little trick, if you want to taste the mix that you're doing, take a little piece, make a little burger, yeah? Just put it in the pan after it's hot and then test it. And if you don't like the seasoning or whatnot, adjust it. Um, this is what we do normally. But if you already have your recipe down and you've made it a lot, um, it should be pretty much spot on. Now, I'm going to take little meatballs. Yes, I'm just going to roll small little balls. We're going to sear them off first and then we're going to put them in the tomato sauce. Um, should be hot. Oh, right. I'm trying to drag James. Yeah, like forever. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Jim has. He's been trying to get me on Twitch for a while because I've been streaming on YouTube for a long time. Fluffs? Fluffers? Oops, sorry. <laughs> So, uh, I hope all of you guys are content and happy today. Um, well, the, the picture's a lot better than last time, I have to admit. Yeah, it took me like half an hour to fix it today. Um, the audio will be better next time. All right, this I'll make sure of because I'll have another mic. And, well, for other things that are out of my control, go away, it'll fly. For other things that are out of my control, well, that's how it is. It goes to Twitch on my account. Oh, really? Uh, Jim, can you talk um, my mom through this real quick? Because my hands have raw meat on them. Hey, Mr. McFluffy. Right, so with the pan coming up to Tim, yeah? I'm going to put it in one at a time. Little bubbles. The, the reason for this is we want to make little meat bubbles because this will shake them, you know, sear the meat. Yes, otherwise they'll fall apart in the uh, sauce, especially if you move them. Um, yeah, mom, if it doesn't open, mom, quick question, are you using the computer or are you using a cell phone, your phone? Because this can be, it can be a, a little different if you're not using uh, the computer.
Now, to make the meatballs, it should take about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how large they are that are cut off. cooking. Just give them a turn. You want a nice golden brown color like this. Alright. Sorry guys, excuse me, I'm gonna blow my nose real quick because I got a bunch of peppers in my nose. Okay. Catch you later. Bye, Mr. McFluffy. Computer, computer. Alright, well, don't worry, Mom. We'll try to figure this out. Um, we'll, try, we'll try figuring it out. Alright. Enjoy your dinner, Mr. McFluffy. Where are you clicking? Mom, take the link. Copy the entire thing. Paste it back into the ULR. To see if it'll work, because otherwise I don't know what to say because I'm not at the computer right now to see it. Alright, so. Oh, the one in the chat. All right, that makes sense. I have another link. If anybody wants to click on it and donate, I'll be eternally thankful. That's in the description, I believe. It's in the YouTube description. I don't think it's in the Twitch description. Well, Jim and I will figure this out a little later. Oh, 19 people right now. Fantastic. Now, guys, we're almost finished. I would say another 30 minutes, more or less. Maybe a little longer, just so everything comes together. Are the, are the one that's just... Okay, alright, sorry. The one that, I guess what Jim's saying, the link in the description doesn't work. The link in the chat works. Well, at least one of them does. So... Okay, well, well, thank you, Jim, for figuring it out. All right, well, the meatballs are going to be... I'm going to transfer them real quick. This is a plate. No, no, not a plate. I'm going to be making more things out of this in a minute. I'm just searing the meatballs off right now. I'm going to put those in the sauce. They're going to finish cooking. And then I'm going to toast the bread. Um, I'm then going to add all the ingredients and top it and everything, cheese, etc., etc. Fine. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's a ceramic pan. It's an old pan. It's, it's either that or I use my nonstick, and um, I don't like using my nonstick all the time. It's not good for you. Okay. 
Então, vamos agora. If you need to add a little more water to this, then do. Don't be afraid to. Drive this out. Put it here. Okay. Wait. There we go. All right, Jim. Keep everybody talking. Or. Real quick, I'm going to clean up and tidy up real quick, okay? Yeah, well, I wish I was at the pool right now, too. Uh, yeah. The Twitch stream is going to kill it on here. <laughs> well, Jim, I don't know. Well, I hope to, yes, because Twitch doesn't have the same algorithm as YouTube. Did the tip go through? Um, I don't know if the tip went through because I wasn't looking at the monitor, so I don't know. Check the camera battery, too. All right, give me one sec. I'll be right back. Okay, um, everyone, the little screen's going to disappear for a second. I'm still here, don't worry. I had a little dummy battery for my camera, which died recently, so now I have to, I'm back to using batteries. Say, it's good. Just on the camera. Whoops, there we go. And I'm in focus, I'm not in focus. One second. I apologize, everybody. Yeah? This is, I'm still learning everything. One moment. Um, Yes, it went. Okay. Oh, thank you, Mom. I appreciate it. And it's in focus now. Oh, it's just, trust me, if nobody's done uh, like live cooking videos before, it's a lot harder than you think. 
Auto focus off now. No, I don't know, Jim. I don't know because one time. Yeah. Give it a minute. It has to think a little bit. Oh, my camera. I'll tell you, sometimes I want to rip my hair out with it. I love it, but, you know, sometimes. Shot to test. Uh, maybe. Well, if I stand here, this is good. Well, at least I know that. If I stand here, it works now. It's better. Okay. The cameras started to realize what's good and what's not. Right, but frustrating. I know. Anyway, GH5. Yeah. Is it? I am. I'm using a GH5 Panasonic camera. I love it, like I said, but the sensor in it's very small. And because it doesn't allow the light to enter, well, it's a little hard to uh, adjust. Right, now. This is cooking away. Right now. Now, as always, when you're in doubt with the cooking process, just give it a little taste with a little spoon. It's okay. It's good. Yeah. Oh, that's actually really good. The onions would be better. Perfect. Warming up, warming up. <laughs> working now. I, I, it's working now. I, I bet it smells good. Uh, it smells a lot better in person than it does while online. The day that they actually come out, or the day that they invent the ability for you to be able to smell or transmit smell, while watching a picture, that'll be the day that movies are a lot better. Or well, then they'll probably have holographics because we're coming up with that right now. I, I can't smell anything. I know. Well, <laughs> uh, Jim, next week if you're here, you'll be able to. Okay, so this is cooking away. The only thing that we need to do now, yes, just if to order to be orderly with everything. Toast the bread, um, take the cheese out, cut it up, and then place a little bit of the sauce on the bread, place while they're cooked, meatballs on that, a little bit of cheese, maybe a little bit of arugula, or a little bit of something, uh, the caramelized onions as well, and that's it. This is very easy and simple sandwich. Very simple. Especially if you make everything ahead of time. Yeah, cheese. Yes. So I, I have some, I have a few different cheeses here. I'm going to use mozzarella because mozzarella is a good melting cheese. I could use the other cheeses that I have. Um, I have Mao, which is a cheese that's from Menorca, which they actually have now in the grocery store here. So it's a, it's a nice cheese. I like it a lot. Um, I think I used all my Manchego actually, so maybe I just have the two. But anyway, I'm going to use a little bit of mozzarella. It's a cheese freak. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love cheese. I can't live without cheese. Seriously. I'm one of those people that cannot live without it. Okay. So, right. To continue, we're going to dry now. Now, when when you're making like a, a meatball sandwich, yeah, if you cut the bread, that's great. I already pre-cut this because this was from yesterday and on Sundays, everything's closed. So I have to save the bread. Anyway, if you take out, you have to take out a little bit because otherwise the meatballs are not going to sit properly. And you can use this for the pan art as well. This is another good idea. Yeah. Take it out of the bottom, you can take a little out of the top. If anybody hasn't been to France, um, well, then you'll be, and if you're visiting France, well, you'll be in for a great surprise because 
France is known for its pastries as well as for its bread. Very good. And actually, the pastries here in, in Barcelona, they're very good as well. There's some excellent pastry shops in Barcelona. And there's a few things here if Jim wants to explain everything. But we just had a holiday this past week, and it's the night of San Juan. And normally, they make what's called a coca, which is a bread that's specifically for San Juan. So you can think of it, it's not a pizza, but it's similar to a pizza. It's a flat type of savory pasty, yeah? And they add, well, they add different things to it, a lot of different things. I forget everything because I haven't seen them for a while, and this year I haven't seen them. Um, but this is a very typical thing here in Catalonia, and something that you'll see, especially during the festivals. No, Jim's not with me today, Mum. That one is like a giant pork scratchings. Oh, yeah, that one. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Cochinillo is another thing that's also very common, but that cochinillo is more Spanish. Yes. Um, but that would be a fun thing to cook. I don't have the oven for it, though, because you have to get a whole pig. It's suckling pig. I know cochinillo is very tasty, though. <laughs> I'm afar. She's doing great. Hey, guys. Well, we have not that much longer, okay? And so if everybody's, if every, if anybody right now wants to take a quick break, potty break or whatnot, to go get a beer or something, feel free to do so right now. Now's a good time. I know. I need to visit more of the center of Spain, Jim. I haven't been around Madrid or any of the other places for a long time, but I would like to visit again. I need to get around Spain more because typically we go up to Costa Brava, which is just north of Barcelona, and they have some excellent places where you can go swimming because just north of Barcelona, um, in Costa Brava, the beaches are smaller. They tend to be rocky, and because of that, they don't have as much sand. You can dive, and the water is crystal clear. You can see everything. So if you're into diving, Costa Brava is a fantastic place to go. And like I said, if you need any helps or tips, drop me a message or talk to Jim as well, and we'll help you out. And then for the nice sandy beaches, if you go south of Barcelona, down to uh, more towards Tarragona or Cambrils, they have some excellent, nice flat beaches that, again, if you need any recommendations on where to go, what to do, contact me or Jim. My favorite Catalan dish well, I don't know, because there's a lot. It would be paella, the normal one, if I could eat it because of the shellfish. I do like a nice paella, right? But then again, paella is from Valencia, not technically just Catalonia. Um, I don't know, maybe a escalivada. But then you also have prequendo, which is good. You have a few other dishes as well, and you have even more. But then again, you have a lot of things here like wet or butifarra or imbudidos that are very um, common in Catalonia. Yeah, we, you know, you know, we need to gym. We need to go on a cooking road trip. If anybody wants to, uh, well, we may have to create a GoFundMe account for the cooking road trip though, because this year I don't think it'll be possible. But that would be fun. Okay, right, in the toaster. And we're going to turn the oven on. We need to heat up. Little camera? What happened to it? There we go. Okay, it's been on the All right. Alistair's son and girlfriend are teaching camp. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. The desserts I love. I don't know. Well, I like crema catalana. But, and I made a video on crema catalana, by the way. But no, crema catalana. Um, and here they say crema catalana is from, from Catalonia. In France, they say it's creme brulee. And the French say it's theirs. Um, there is a 
bit of a difference making each one and I think I explained it in my video, I don't remember, it's been a while. Anyway, it's for another day. But there is a little bit of a discussion whether or not Prima Catalana was originally from the French or Creme Brulee or vice versa. But then again, it's the same thing with uh, Ratatouille because here they have a dish which is called Sampaina. Well, it's not a dish, it's a, a type of vegetables. And it's very similar to uh, Ratatouille. Hey, call me Bainsey. Hey, everybody. Is it this? Oh, this little night bot's persistent, isn't he? <laughs> All right. So, anyway, um, no, anyway, there's a lot of good. If you're into pastries as well, you have a lot of good pastries here. Marto is delicious, but I prefer crema catalana. Yeah, I prefer crema catalana too. If I order something, I order crema catalana. And a good crema catalana, yeah, has the, um, well, the sugar, yeah, on top. It's not too thick. If it's too thick, it's just like the creme brulee. You're going to break a tooth. And if it's too thin, well, then it's not fun to break. But no, it's fun. 25. I have a fun part, 25 dollars. <laughs> All good here. All right. Well, it's six thirty my time. It's still sunny. It'll be sunny until like nine thirty, almost ten now. And it's beautiful here. Absolutely beautiful. It's definitely beach weather. YouTube in here is a little aggressive. I know. I yeah. Again, guys, because originally the night bots were only supposed to be for one or the other service, not for both. So. If you're seeing this like again and again and again and again, it's because we hit the little option that Jim wanted to do earlier where it allows everyone to talk to each other, which is more interactive than just, well, you know, me talking to somebody on Twitch or YouTube and then vice versa and people not knowing if I'm speaking to someone imaginary or not. So this is why we did it. Um, do, do, do. All right, guys, so we're almost ready. Almost. The meatballs should be done. Now, I'm going to check one real quick. And when you're checking one, check the biggest, because typically that's the one that takes the longest to cook. Okay, we're ready. Meatballs are done. Pop the meatball. We are ready. And if I didn't have everything I needed with me. Right. That's done. That's done. The bread. Just set up the little plate. I'll tell you what. Set it up on another little cutting board. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, give me a second. I'm trying to figure out how to do this with the camera because I haven't done this plating live before with the camera. Take a little bit of fresh mozzarella, just some thin slices out of it. Okay. Uh, as long as it's not spicy. No, it's not spicy. Today I didn't make the spicy. So I have, at least in my YouTube, I should have the list of ingredients for you to make this. Um, if you want, 
Yeah, I know. No, I love spicy. If this was just, this is for more people today. If this, my house, if this was just for me, I'd add a little bit of, well, chilies, cornflakes or something. Um, well, even pimiento, a little bit of paprika to make it spicy and to make the sauce spicy as well. James, move the saucepan. Yeah, I, I am Jim. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, from, um, Anyway, tell you what. There we go. No. Right. So let's play. Bread's a little toasted. tomato sauce again um, if the tomatoes if you need to blend the tomato sauce feel free to do so this is today I'm not blending because I don't need to everything is pretty much small and, and if anybody can hear that noise that's the neighbors dropping the blinds right now so nothing to worry about well they're doing something but anyway We've had a lot of construction going on for the past few uh, months here in the building, drilling it like every day because of all the works that we've had to do in this house. And well, it's been a long process, but at least we're finished. I'm sitting here drilling one of the movies. <laughs> all right, let's see, Jim, move on to the All right, well, I can't stop. I don't know what you mean. Uh, so they want some Andrew. Yes, Catalan fundigos. Ah, uh, bon, amigos. I <laughs> just lurking. Okay, guys. So what we're going to do? Yeah, we have some. I'm going to heat up the caramelized onions to release the oil because I don't want to lose this oily. Because the oil, once it starts to uh, cool down, more or less to room temperature, it, it's a little harder to strain it from the onions. So give it a little bit of temperature. It becomes a little more liquidy. You're able to strain it. Now, another trick to making a good tortilla española, yeah, if you're using onions, caramelize the onions first. And like I said in my videos many times, and then add the potatoes in. Okay, so, I'm going to add the caramelized onions to this. And this is a small sandwich. If you want to make a big one, feel free to do so. And going to put the lid in. I think this will hold three in the bowls. Maybe not. Oof, barely. Okay, uh, cut off too much at the end. Alright, it's a two meatball sandwich. Yeah, that's okay. Two meatballs. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of mozzarella cheese. I'm going to pop this in the oven. Yes. Tall sandwich. Very tall. All right. Now, If you have a salamander at home, it's a lot easier to do this. Come here. Right. 
any of those. Sorry about that, I'm going to cheat on this. Let's see this one. There we go. I'm going to give it another minute. Yeah, just eats. I know. I could do that. Huh? Some I've seen some people actually do that. Um, well, for like a prank or whatnot, to see if they actually get orders, and uh, it could be a good idea. Elizabeth, I'm not doing painting. No, Elizabeth is outside on the deck. Um, I don't think she can hear me right now, though. I say I love being there. I, well, Jim gets to help me finish the food as well because normally when I make this, it's too much for me um, and Elizabeth because, you know, when you make like a tortilla or something or you make a paella, it's a lot of food. Looks super good, Jim. So, well, thank you, guys. Salamander. Real. Hi. Are you a fool? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we won't have James Ford every weekend. Oh, Lord, is that more than welcome to help me? So, hey. Well, like I said, guys, we want to be able to um, get together more often, Jim and I, to do things together, to be able to, you know, work more together when we can. And what Jim, like I said, can explain it again in chat. But um, once we reach either either of us both of us or whatnot our goals because i need to get affiliated on twitch because i'm not right now after i'm affiliated and, and after jim is affiliated and i think he reaches so many subs um we'll do some certain things to reach these goals so this is you know it can be a fun thing for us to do and as well as an incentive for us to do it as well a good incentive um and then on youtube well i can do the same thing as well but um, yes, when we get going up with him, we're going to do some goals to do some really special duo streams. I, because these streams is much more entertaining than just me by myself. I have fun. I enjoy this a lot better than being by myself. And then just sorry, making a video uh, by myself. But when we do streams together, it's fun having Jim here to be able to communicate, talk with him. Because it's even more natural than just creating, say, a video by yourself. And it's even more natural now than creating a pre-recorded video. Although some of the pre-recorded videos, you can make some very nice content after you practice and you keep editing and, you know, taking videos and whatnot. But after a while, you get better at it. But I'll tell you what, live streams are fun. They're a lot more fun. Okie dokie. I think we're almost ready. Okay, so we should be glass melted anyway. If you have a little torch, that would be the best thing to melt the cheese quickly. Or like I said, if you have a salamander, which is a top heating element only, so you put your plates in there normally in the kitchen, it heats it very fast, very quickly, and it's extremely hot. And uh, well, it's the best thing for us because this is what we use all the time to reheat dishes. So, right. and now I need my spoon. Okay, guys, we're almost there. Okay. Now, take a little bit of arugula. Now, make a nice little sandwich. A little tall, but. And of course, a little sandwich on top. Voila! 
tasty, delicious little meatball sandwich. And like I said, it's very easy to change this if you want, if you want to add in some ingredients to the recipe, if you want to add, say, basil to this as well, fresh basil, change what cheese you add, but some caramelized onions, homemade marinara sauce, and again, if you also want to enhance the marinara sauce, and I have a few good recipes on my channel for tomato basil sauce. Not, it's not just by itself, but it is with a few other videos. Oops, it keeps falling off. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions now, ask me before we are finished here, because it's dinner time right now for us. Yes, <laughs> and I'm hungry. Um, oh boy, lots of chat, huh? Any uh, eating is yummy, 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 awesome. Melted cheese, voila, yeah, voila. I'm hungry and Alex says it's better than Subway. Yeah, well, it's healthier than Subway. Oh, thank you, huh? Can you get in? No, Jim, I can't. No, it's too much. I, I know. I, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not doing that right now. This is very hot. So, <laughs> this is after. It's too messy anyway. Who is eating that? I offer myself. <laughs> Uh, maybe me. We'll see. If um, if Elizabeth finishes now, she'll probably finish it before I do. But I have a lot, so uh, we should shout out. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can. Lucky you. Yeah, second. Let me see if I can get it real quick. Hmm? Just wait one second. Okay, all right, everybody. You're going to see Elizabeth is going to say hi. Okay. Honey, come on. One sec. Yes. All right. Hi. I'm going to stand back a little bit because I'm just not in focus. Okay, yes. Hi. Hi, how are you guys? How are you doing? Hi. I'm planting because... <laughs> oh, dirty hands. Yeah. Right, you look at what? Look. Dinner. Yeah? Oh, Have a look. Good. Uh, hey, that's mm. good. If anybody... Oh, careful. This is a fall. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> so, if anybody, like I said, needs any help, any questions or comments on what to do, where to visit, where to go in Spain, ask us, ask Jim, um, and, you know... It'll be, that's it. And like I said, if you know other friends, or if you're not going, but you, if you have friends that are going, then give them my channel, give them Jim's channel, talk to us, and we'll help you out. Hi. <laughs> so, anyway, you happy? Yes, you're yeah, welcome to. Yes, of course, because we have now the balcony full of plants. Now it looks very pretty. <laughs> All right. We're up. Victor's on here, everybody's on here, mom's on here, everyone. Uh, so, say hi and then say goodbye. <laughs> okay. okay. So take care and I hope that you enjoy because we're going to enjoy this perfect recipe. Okay. <laughs> right, anyway, guys, thank you very much for, well, today for showing up, for appearing. Um, if you can share any of my videos, I'd be very grateful if you have already subbed and liked the video down below. But sharing with your friends would help me out greatly as well. Thank you very much for all, well, this past year, year and a half, and hopefully for more live videos to come, we're going to be doing a lot more. So okay. anyway, take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Adios.